Hypertension is defined as high blood pressure that is more than 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury in two different measurements. Blood pressure is represented using two numbers like 120 millimeters of mercury over 80 millimeters of mercury and this 120 represents the systolic blood pressure that occurs when your heart is contracting and 80 represents a diastolic blood pressure when the heart relaxes. Blood pressure can be classified into various levels. We have a normal blood pressure which is normally 120 mm of mercury over diastolic blood pressure of 80 mm of mercury. In pre-hypertension or elevated blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is between 120 to 121 and diastolic blood pressure of more than 18. Stage 1 hypertension is diagnosed when blood pressure systolic is 130 to 139 and the diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89 millimeters of mercury. Stage 2 hypertension is anything above 140 millimeters of mercury in systolic blood pressure and a diastolic blood pressure of more than 90. Normally the systolic and diastolic blood pressure are elevated concurrently, but sometimes systolic blood pressure can be elevated while there is no more diastolic blood pressure and that is referred to as isolated systolic hypertension. And when the diastolic blood pressure is elevated but there is no more systolic blood pressure, that is referred to as isolated diastolic hypertension. The blood pressure readings are made on the arm on the brachial artery representing the blood pressure throughout the body. And in more than 95% of cases, a specific underlying cause of hypertension cannot be found and thus this refer to as essential hypertension or primary hypertension. The risk factors for this essential hypertension may be old age, obesity, salt, and sedentary lifestyle. Secondary hypertension is associated with an underlying cause, and the most common causes are reduced renal blood flow, causing elevated production of renin, retaining more and more intravascular volume, therefore increasing blood pressure. The pathogenesis is not clearly understood, but many factors may contribute to its development such as renal dysfunction, peripheral resistance vasotone, endothelial dysfunction, autonomic tone, insulin resistance, and neurohumoral factors. When high blood pressure develops very rapidly, it is referred to as hypertensive crisis. That is more than 180 in systolic blood pressure and more than 120 millimeters of mercury in diastolic blood pressure. It can be hypertensive urges when no end organ damage has been observed or hypertensive emergence when there is an evidence of an end organ damage and the most commonly damaged organs are the brain, the heart and the blood vessels together with the kidneys. Hypertension is predominantly an asymptomatic condition that's why it's known as a silent killer and diagnosis is usually made at routine examination or when a complication arises. It presents with features of the underlying cause. Hypertension can present as an emergency with confusion, drowsiness, chest pains and breathlessness. The investigations done are to diagnose and identify the underlying cause of this hypertension, such as urine analysis for blood, protein and glucose, blood urea, electrolytes and creatinine. Sometimes hypokalemic alkalosis may indicate primary hyperhydrosteronism, but it is usually due to diuretic therapy. And blood glucose levels will be measured, serum total and high density lipoprotein cholesterol, thyroid function test, and tool bleed electrocardiogram. In management of a hypertension, the optimum blood pressure for reduction of major cardiovascular events is 139 over 83 millimeters of mercury and even lower in patients with diabetes mellitus. Non-drug therapy can be employed before using pharmacologic therapy and this is appropriate left of message correcting obesity, reducing alcohol intake, restricting soul intake, taking regular physical exercise and increasing consumption of fruits and vegetables. Quitting smoking and eating oily fish and adopting a diet that is low in saturated fat may produce a further reduction in cardiovascular risk in these hypertensive patients. In pharmacologic therapy, use drugs known as antihypertensives, and these can be classified into groups as diuretics and thiazides, angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists, SE inhibitors, 
calcium channel antagonist beta blockers alpha blockers thank you and hope you have enjoyed our lecture you can subscribe to our channel